Hi everybody, happy Saturday. <sighs> you know, I'm really excited. I'm just gonna turn off my phone to make sure we don't get interrupted. I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you. It's been a long time since I have done an energy update. And, um, you know, it's not even like mid-month because, you know, my, my sort of my routine used to be I would do my year or my monthly thing in the beginning <clears throat> and then sort of mid-month I would do an update. But for the past couple of days, past couple of days, the first week of this month, I have felt like such massive, massive acceleration and expansion and clearing. And I know that um, we're all sort of experiencing this in our own way. Things just feel so unsettled right now and so mercurial. It's like any minute now, things can just change at the drop of a hat. And so I recorded this video. I sort of did a pre-recorded version of this yesterday. And then this morning I woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm not really feeling really clear. Even in, you know, even in just 24 hours, I was feeling like there was more clarity that I wanted to share with you and more insight that I wanted to share with you. So that's why I've decided just to do a live stream for you. So happy Saturday. I'm super excited to be connecting with you guys. You may hear the birds chiming in um, as I go through this, but that's what they do. They voice their support. Um, so where to begin? You know, I kind of mentioned this, and again, I'm sorry um, for uh, comments that I can't, for whatever reason, Facebook still doesn't let all the comments through. Like, I sometimes will see a comment come through, and then I think, like, oh, they're coming through. And then I read the comments after I wrap the live um, broadcast, and I see that there's so many comments that go unanswered. So it's not that I'm ignoring you, it's just I can't see them. And I don't know if it's just me or if that's what Facebook is doing. I know there's a delay now, um, but whatever. I'm just building a bridge, getting over it, and moving on. <laughs> Still doesn't mean that I can't share with you the insight that I have for you today and that I'm really excited to, to share. So I kind of alluded to this yesterday. I, I made a quick video about my um, Oracle card sessions and how they've been so potent and so powerful lately. And... I, you know, was guided to share this video with you, that brief video with you. It's on my Instagram and it's on my Facebook page too. And I think I even said it was something about the cosmic cleanup. But what I'm seeing is that these Oracle card sessions are so focused and so clear in terms of what direction and what insight people are getting in terms of where to focus their energy and where to sort of do their work, so to speak. And I called it the cosmic cleanup because that's what it feels like. It feels like right now we are in this phase where things have start have really kind of slowed down in many ways, which I know is ironic because if we look at the world, the news, the media, what's happening with you know all the scandals and the eruptions and then all the fires and all the disasters and all the chaos, it feels like things are moving really rapidly. But when we go inside and we go to in sort of our own experience, I feel that it's like this slowdown has occurred and things have really really sort of stretched out energetically to give us an opportunity to get really, really clear. And the image that I got yesterday was it's kind of like movie footage. And, you know, we're watching some video footage or movie footage and we're looking for details that we can't quite see. And so we put it on like slow motion and we really, really slow it down. And that allows us to get really clear on what we feel in our experience, maybe details that we have previously missed or things that have just sort of passed by our awareness without us really being able, <clears throat> excuse me, to focus on them or to receive them. So it feels in many ways like things have been kind of slowed down. And I have some notes that I'm going to be referring to for this um, the duration of this video because I want to be as clear as I can. Now, the caveat is that who knows even a week from now what you know relevance this information <laughs> is going to have. Um, because again, I know that we are just unfolding and opening up so rapidly. However, I do feel like generally speaking, the insight that I'm going to share with you today um, is going to take us through the rest of the year or at least until like the first week of January. So what I have seen is that, you know, as always, the closer we get to the end of the linear year, the more rapid things, the more rapidly things seem to unfold. And, you know, we have the equinox or we have the, the eclipse and then we have the equinox and then we have the 1111 portal. We're moving towards the 1212 portal and then we're moving towards the, the solstice on the 21st. So it's just bam, 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 bam. Not even to mention all of the astrological stuff that is coming in to support us. So 
what I'm seeing is there's been this really rapid acceleration. And anytime there's a rapid acceleration, what I see is that there are realities that are potential. You know, what I'm seeing more and more, and really my own beliefs on how we create our reality and how we create our experience have expanded. And what I'm seeing more and more is that we aren't so much creating the reality as we are creating the opportunity to plug into the reality that already exists. And that we are creating our experience through what we allow ourselves to tap into with the potential and what we believe and what we think is true and what we think we can have and all of that and what we think is possible. So we're not so much creating the thing that we experience. The thing that we end up experience are, experiencing already exists. It's just a matter of what our level of awareness and belief allows us to plug into. So... With that idea in mind, what I have seen is that there was, you know, when things really started to pick up momentum around the, the eclipse in August, it was sort of like there were a couple of potentials that we could have moved into. And there's always the potential that seems to be sort of the closest one, right? The lowest hanging fruit. And that seems to be the one that collectively would be the easiest, so to speak, for us to move into because it just seems like the logical next step. However, there are often other levels of reality or other versions of reality that are a little bit further along or, for lack of a better explanation, seemingly a little more advanced, right? And our willingness to be present with our experience, our willingness to do our work and to really get right with ourselves and then move through the world from a place of integrity and honesty and truth and an open heart and a unified self has allowed us to move more rapidly into these expressions that are perhaps at a higher level of awareness. And I use this sort of hierarchical approach just to make it a little bit clearer for our minds to understand because man, I get it. Sometimes it's really hard to even give this experience words because it goes so far beyond what we even have language for. So I'm doing my best to describe it from my perspective and what I see. So in hopes it can bring a little bit of um, understanding or shed some light on your experience as well. But there was sort of a more advanced or a, a reality that was perhaps further along that we seem to have moved into. And what that always requires is when we begin to move more rapidly, it's like, you know, the rocket entering or the comet entering the atmosphere. The closer it gets to the atmosphere, the faster it burns and the more stuff has to burn off. See, the birds love this. <laughs> So what I see is that December and November have felt really, really intense because we are moving more rapidly into this higher timeline. The timelines of 2018 are really, really potent. I've already started to kind of tune into them because I've got a lot of stuff happening in January, a lot of stuff happening in February with classes and workshops and travel. So I'm already kind of projecting into the next few months and it feels really big and really exciting, but also like it requires a lot of surrender and release right now now because a lot of the stuff that we're holding individually and collectively we just can't take with us this is not a new idea but it feels even more intense and like the burn off is happening more intensely because we really are getting to those really core versions of self and we're just stripping it down to no illusion right we just feel naked and like we don't have any skin a lot of the time so it's kind of like my friend Roseanne, who many of you, I've spoken about her with you before, and she does these amazing sessions, these Grace Reset sessions, and we were chatting, um, I think it was last week or the week before, and she was giving me this key card analogy. She was saying, really, it's like you have this key card, and your key card is what sort of gives you entry into this version of your reality, and that key card must be encoded with your own truth, with your own authenticity, with your own... Um, sort of soul blueprint, right? Or your energetic thumbprint. And it's, you know, you can't fool mother nature, right? Like we can't even pretend anymore when we're being honest and we're not being honest. So it's sort of like the gloves are off, all bets are off. And the only way through this is to be very honest, to be very real, to be vulnerable. Vulnerable is a hard one. And to be willing to experience things in a very profound, powerful way. So things have really slowed down in many ways. I'm seeing this a lot in my Oracle card sessions that things seem to be going really slowly and people are saying these projects that I thought were moving have all of a sudden stalled or relationships have come to a halt or things have come to a really weird place and I just feel like I'm kind of stuck. It's because we, are been, we have been given this opportunity of things moving more slowly so that we can catch the details. 
also so that we can really get right with how we feel. Because a lot of what we're being asked to do right now is to trust our feelings even when we don't exactly know what they mean or why we feel that way. The only claim that the divine, and that's the true self, right? Living authentically, living through the heart, living our truth, the divine self, the whole self, the higher self, all of these to me are the same experience of the divine moving through us and our divine spark announcing itself through our experience. The only claim the divine ever makes is I am. I am. It's like the sun. The sun is, it shines, it is, I am. I don't need permission to shine. I don't need an invitation to shine. I don't need validation or justification to shine. I don't need you to want me to shine. I don't even need you to be standing in my light for me to shine. I am, I shine. What follows the I am, and we talk a lot about this in spiritual circles, right? We talk a lot about how I am is a very powerful statement, and it is, and how anything that follows the words I am is a very powerful manifestation of what we are calling to ourselves through our experience. It's not so much what am I calling to myself, but what am I allowing myself to plug into? I am is what programs my key card and allows me to access this reality. If my statement is I am unlovable, I am broken, I am unworthy, or I am powerful, I am limitless, I am loved, whatever statement I am making is what is encoding that key card and that's what lets, lets me in. I can't say I am unlovable and allow myself access to the reality where I am loved, right? Irony is I'm always loved, but you get what I'm saying, right? If I'm looking at it from my human perspective and saying, wow, I really want a relationship, but I keep saying I am unlovable in a relationship, then I can't access the reality where I have a relationship. So the only claim the divine ever makes is I am. What follows the I am is our choice. All that, you know, the divine self, my whole self, you know, sort of big Andrew, as I have referred to it in the past, right? The higher self and the non-physical aspects are like the big Andrew. And then there's little Andrew, which is the part of me that you see as the human self. What follows the statement, I am. My divine self makes the claim, I am. What follows that statement is my choice. That's how I, as my human self, co-create in my reality and allow myself access or deny myself access to a certain level of awareness and reality. So I am is the only claim that I am ever making from my divine perspective and whatever follows that is my choice as Andrew. What I hold up as true, what I choose to believe, what I stake a claim to, what I take action on in the direction that I move in, the heart, the soul, the divine self is always expressing itself like the sun. It shines, it is, I am. And if we think of for a second, if we even just perceive that, you know, sort of my heart, because the heart is really the portal to the divine, right? The heart center, not necessarily the physical biological heart, but the heart center, the energetic center that resides in this part of the body is the portal to the divine. It is the bridge between the physical and the non-physical. And that is the light that shines through my experience. And I talk a lot about this, and I'm not the only one. We talk about this a lot in spiritual circles about how we are observing our experience, right? The movie that we are watching, right? That observer perspective of going, wow, this is what it's like to be Andrew in San Francisco on December 9th, you know, 2017. My beliefs, my thoughts, the stories that I tell are the film that goes in front of that light that shines. The heart says, I am. That's all I am, I am. That's the only claim the divine ever makes. And what I experience from that, that infinite expression is created by my film strip that I put on. So again, if my story is that I am unlovable and I am broken or I am happy and healthy and thriving, that's the film strip that I'm putting in front of the light that is projected through and that's what creates my experience. Are you with me? So what I experience is always a reflection of my projection. Whatever I'm putting in front of that eternal divine light is what I experience because the divine light has no investment in what I experience. The divine light experiences it all equally and says, 
This is what it's like when humans make this choice, when Andrew believes this, when Andrew believes that. This is what it is. The divine is seeking expansion through experience. That's what it is, right? It's the recurring fractal. And chaos or decay or imbalance is always reflecting back to me what beliefs have got to go. Whatever just can't hold on in these higher frequencies, right? It's like the, it's again, it's the altitude thing. Things just, some things are unstable in these higher frequencies. They just can't hang out. And they fall apart because they are no longer energetically supported. So we have to be the ones that are asking the questions and making the assessments. When things in our experience for the next few weeks moving into January and into 2018, when things feel like they've come to a halt or they're falling apart or, God, I just can't figure out what it is about this. Why is it so chronic and why is it recurring and why is it back again? Here are some questions to ask. Does this belong to me? You know, there's a lot of us that are really um, doing a lot of clearing for the collective. And I personally felt like there was a big break from it. Like, I feel like I've done a lot of clearing for the collective the past few years. And then for some reason, this past year was really about my own personal experience. And there were a few times where I was aware that I was clearing some stuff collectively. But really, for the most part, it was just me with my own stuff. But again, over the past couple of months, I have found myself in these weird pockets of fear or anger or, you know, just feeling sort of sideways in my experience and not really sure what it is. And then forgetting to ask that question, the very simple question, does this even belong to me? And if it doesn't belong to me, it makes it so much easier to release any attachments to it, to just let it go so that it can evaporate through me. Because again, I'm the Brita filter, right? So I have chosen, and I'm not the only one, there are many of us that do this. We make the soul agreement to come in and have our energy field be the thing that a lot of the stuff is processed through. So does this belong to me? That's the simple question. And if it's not, then we can say, okay, let this move through me with grace and ease. And we can also say, look guys, team, universe, guides, angels, God, whatever you call it. I've got a lot of my own stuff going on right now. So I would prefer to not be clearing a lot of stuff for other people. I need some clarity and some focus on my own experience. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you're going to be docked points because you decided to focus more on your own stuff for the moment. There are eight, what, almost 8 billion people on the planet right now. Pretty sure someone else can take the burden of clearing the stuff for the collective for a minute. So this idea that you have to be the martyr, this idea that you have to come and like, oh, well, I'm a spiritual being. Oh, well, I'm a star seed. Oh, well, I'm an empath. So that means that I have to suffer and struggle and do all this stuff. Bullshit. The martyr program gets you nowhere. That old martyr program is collapsed. It is extinct. It is defunct. And trying to keep it alive is a recipe for suffering. And there's still this idea that many of us have active, that it's like spiritual brownie points. Oh, but if I'm a martyr, then somehow I get more gold stars. Or it's a good thing to suffer and sacrifice on behalf of others. Not really so much. No. Our own self-care and our own self Maintenance and our own in, and integrity, physically, emotionally, mentally, and energetically, is crucial. Because I cannot exist in these higher frequencies if I have not made my own well-being important and put that at the top of my list. That doesn't mean that I don't care for others, but it means that I care for myself first. So that I can be the most thriving, balanced, vibrant, healthy version of myself. Because unless I am, I'm no good to anybody. If I show up half-baked and sort of cockeyed and, you know, limping because I'm half-broken and beat up because I haven't been taking care of myself, I'm not going to do anybody any good. The next question. Does this still serve a purpose? You know, I talked about this in my um, December video, the, the one that I released at the beginning of the month, which was just like, what, a week and a half ago, but it feels like it was a month ago <laughs> or years ago. Does this still serve a purpose? So often we have these old programs in our cell, like we have cellular memory or we have these old mental sort of neural pathways and these old beliefs, or maybe we have past life in interference that's still kind of bleeding through into this version of a reality. 
where we're just going down these dead ends once again. And it's like, oh yeah, I go left here every single time and it's always a dead end. And I don't know when I'm gonna accept the fact that it's always a dead end. Sometimes we don't need to have an emotional experience to release something anymore. Sometimes it's just this old program. I don't need to turn left here anymore. There's nothing left. There is nothing left for me to clear. There is nothing left for me to release. There is nothing left for me to go let go of except for the idea that this still has any meaning or value for me and it gets a little bit tricky because we're like well which one is which Andrew how do I know the only way you're gonna know is by being willing to experience all of it you have to be willing you have to be vulnerable you have to be willing to say all right there's this thing coming up within me and I'm sick and tired of this thing but I got to sit with it one more time so I'm gonna do it and maybe you sit down and you go oh there's nothing left it's just a left turn into the dead end okay done letting it go or I sit with it and I go, wow, there's still something here. Oh my gosh, I'm having an emotional response. And you let yourself move through that. Either way, you're moving beyond the idea that this thing still has any bearing or any weight in your experience. This next question is a big one. What is still asking for release? And when we talk about this, you know, a lot of this comes up around relationships and not just personal relationships, but our relationships with ourself, our relationship with things that we use to numb or to soothe or to self-medicate, relationships with external things that we believe we still need in order to be, you know, happy, healthy and satisfied, thriving and balanced and all of that. Asking what is still asking for release it doesn't mean that if you let it go, it's gonna be gone forever. And I'm seeing this come up a lot in my, in my Oracle card sessions with relationships. A lot of people are moving out of this old paradigm of relationships. A lot of people are moving out of these imbalanced, toxic, or relationships that are just done. They've run their course, but we're so unsure of what's on the other side of that, or we are so defined by being in a relationship, right? There's still so many people out there that are terrified of being single because they're so defined by the relationship. Just because you are letting go of something doesn't mean you have to let go of it forever. It just means that you have to be willing to let go of it in its current form. Letting go of how you thought it was gonna be, letting go of how you thought it should be, letting go of your expectations, letting go of your requirements that are outdated and outmoded. You have to be willing to let go of what is in order to move into what is waiting. Some of this shit is just too big to get through the door into this next level of reality. It is just too heavy and too dense and too outdated. I can't, you know, it's like, I've used this analogy before. It's like trying to, to put, you know, Windows 95 on my brand new laptop. It's just not going to function. The hardware that you have is more advanced. It doesn't need this old program. So just because you are letting it go doesn't mean you have to let it go forever. You have to sometimes let it go in its current form so that it can be reborn. Next question. Where do we still have the opportunity to create healthy boundaries? Are there people in your life that you're still you know, letting them be like the energy vampire and they're sort of sucking on your energy for free and you don't have any boundaries about it, you don't have any requirements for it, you're not asking more of yourself, you're not asking more of them, you're not saying, hey, you know what, I love you, but I can't do this anymore because it's unhealthy for me. This also requires us to show up oftentimes and say, look, I don't know why I feel this way. I just feel like something's not right and I want to talk about it. I don't have an answer for how I want it to be. All I know is that it can't be this way anymore. It also requires us in relationship oftentimes to show up and say, me showing up for you right now is telling you that I can't show up for you right now. I have some self-care to do. I have some work that I need to do and I need to do it kind of on my own. I will come back to you when I have an answer. I will come back to you when I have clarity. But right now I don't have that and I need to find it. So I'm going to go within. I'm going to do my thing. We have to be willing to walk away from things even when it feels scary in order to create healthy boundaries. The next question, which is sort of a, you know, part two of this one, you know, where do we still have the opportunity to create boundaries? Where do we still put our own self-care second? Where do I still say yes when I really want to say no? Where do I still agree to do things that tax me and wipe me out and bleed me dry? 
For what reason? Who the hell, why do I, you know, we still, again, it's this idea that someone up there is keeping score and that, oh, look, Andrew sacrificed himself. Oh, look, Andrew, you know, gave away free sessions or worked, a, you know, an 80-hour week or did all of these things or didn't eat or didn't sleep or didn't do whatever, didn't meditate, didn't do a self-care. Look at how noble he is. We're going to give him more gold stars. No. You are the creator of your experience. You are the creator of the opportunity that allows you to access. So if you want a reality where you are healthy, balanced, and thriving, that reality already exists. But you can't get there until you know what you require to be healthy, balanced, and thriving, and you honor it, and you require it, and you create a boundary that allows you to have it. Another really important question to be asking is, do I really believe this? being objective about our beliefs. We have so much baggage, and this is a human experience, we all do this. We have so much baggage that is inherited, so many stories that are inherited. We're even seeing this play out with all of the stories of the sexual abuse and the, you know, the aggression and the, the horrible, awful things that are happening in Hollywood right now and in you know, politics and just sort of all over the world. These old, imbalanced, masculine, toxic masculinity and toxic femininity, these toxic roles that we have been sort of forced into playing. Now, I'm not giving anyone a free pass for actions that they took, but what I am saying is we seem to have inherited, and you hear these women talk about it all the time. I did this thing, I put myself in this experience because I thought I had to. I didn't feel like I had any other choice. Or, these, you know, these roles that these men are playing, these toxic masculine roles that I have to be the aggressor and that I have to be the one to violate. These are the re relationships that are dying and these beliefs that we have, oftentimes we don't even stop to question them. Or this idea that I have to work and struggle and sacrifice in order to be successful. This old fucked up idea that if I don't even put in 40 to 60 hours a week that I'm not going to get it. And that I must not want it bad enough if I'm not willing to sacrifice and get blood from the stone. I say this all the time. If struggle and sacrifice and your hard work equaled success, then explain to me why there are people who work four jobs that are still striving and struggling to make ends meet. This old story that my effort equals my success is so fucked up. So here are some questions that you can ask yourself around this because oftentimes when we have these old, inherited, really deeply entrenched beliefs that we didn't even maybe consciously say yes to, we were just born in an environment that told us, well, this is how you act when you're a woman. This is how you act when you're a man. This is how you act when you're a, a gay person or a person of color or a trans person or whatever. Some simple statements that you can write down for yourself as a writing exercise. I believe that money is, and then complete that sentence. I believe that when it comes to love, I am, and complete that statement. I believe that when it comes to being professionally fulfilled, I must. And you can swap out any subject for any of these questions, just giving you examples, right? So beginning to really investigate and kind of interrogate yourself and look at these beliefs objectively and say, when the fuck did I believe that I have to struggle and suffer and be a victim and be excluded because of who I have been told that I am? Who the fuck decided that that was a script I needed to read from? And we have to be willing to go to those places with ourselves if we're going to get the clarity and the answers that we're seeking. <clears throat> I had a client um, recently. I did an Oracle card session with her and she was feeling drained, like she had been cut off from her guidance, right? She was feeling so depleted and so exhausted. She was feeling like her intuitive guidance and her insight was not there, right? She didn't feel it. She didn't hear it. She didn't see it. She had a project, she was working on a book, and she felt like that had been gaining some momentum, then all of a sudden it stalled, it was kind of going sideways. She was having <clears throat> some tension in her personal relationship. She was feeling professionally like she was getting a bit, a bit stunted and that she was really wanting, <coughs> excuse me, she was really wanting to move into this version of her, her work where it was more intuitive, where she was allowing herself to bring more of her gifts into it. And she wanted to walk the path of service, but none of it was happening. She was just feeling so frustrated. And what it came down to was that, what came through in the reading was that none of this was because she had done anything wrong. 
None of this was because she had made the wrong choice or a bad choice. It was just she wasn't taking care of herself. She had not created healthy boundaries for herself. And none of those things could happen without healthy boundaries. Without putting her own, well, own and in every single facet of her life, right? With her relationship, it was she needed to assert like, look, there's some things that I want to talk about or there's some things I need to you know, figure out for myself and then I can come back to the relationship when I have some clarity and some answers. Just stating that, you know, with her clients and her, her work, really, you know, being honest about the, the fact that there were some clients who she was ready to divorce and let go because their work had completed, but she was still hanging on to them, perhaps out of the fear that, oh, I need these clients or I can't pay the bills. Or even, you know, going from seeing clients five to six days a week to three to four days a week, allowing herself the time to do these other things and take care of herself. And the book, there's no way that the book could happen because she was so overburdened with her current calendar and her life, she wasn't creating space for that to happen. So there's no way she could have done it because she just didn't have enough to give to it in the moment. Same thing with walking the path of service. One of the biggest lessons that I've had to learn is walking the path of service requires an unrelenting, excruciating set of boundaries because I cannot serve. I cannot be the vessel if I am not doing what I need to do to take care of myself. So what it came down to, really the answer for all of it was healthy boundaries. You got to get clear on what you're saying yes to that you don't want to say yes to anymore. You got to get clear on what are you ready to let go of. <clears throat> and again, it doesn't mean you have to let go of it forever, just in its current form. It can't sustain itself in the way that it has been and expect for you to be healthy, balanced, and thriving within that. Here's the big question. This is like the million dollar question. Can we trust what we feel even when we don't know why we feel that way? Can I trust that this thing that I have always done, this thing that I used to do, this thing that used to serve me, whether it was just it sort of let me be numb or it let me, you know, self-soothe or self-medicate it, let me pretend, right? Whatever it is. I, I may not know why this thing doesn't work for me, me anymore. I'll, all I know is that when I go to engage in it, I just feel off. I feel, you know, I, this for me brings up a lot of my issues around sexual compulsion. And I've, you know, I've been very honest with you guys about that my whole, my whole, my whole, you know, arc of my, of my career and share and practice and sharing this with you guys. And I found myself triggered into some old patterns and behaviors lately. And it's been this thing of like, but why do I feel the need to attach to somebody else in that way? It's because there was something within me that I felt could only be soothed or fixed or whatever or filled by attaching to somebody else outside of me, right? This, and I would feel it as a punch in my third chakra. I would feel this, uh, Whenever I would, you know, go into old behaviors or old patterns and would be like, why do I feel this way? And why am I still doing this thing that makes me feel this way? The only way that I'm ever going to, oftentimes the only way that I'm going to get clarity on those things is by trusting the feeling and saying, okay, I may not know why this feels bad. But I'm willing to trust my feelings that it feels bad, which means it's probably not good for me. And I don't need to know the why in order to say, I just don't want to feel that way anymore. And then once we make the choice to disengage from that behavior or to hold ourselves in our integrity and say, you know what, I don't know why I don't want to do that anymore. It just makes me feel bad. So I'm just going to stay in my space. I'm going to stay in my integrity. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to nurture myself. And then amazing miracle of all miracles, then this clarity emerges. I can't have the clarity if I'm still putting the same old veneer and varnish of numbing it or trying to avoid it on top of that. I gotta be willing to be uncomfortable and let myself not be numbed and have the discomfort of, oh God, I don't like this feeling. I don't like that I have to tell myself no. I don't like that I have to, you know, sort of hold myself back from these unhealthy behaviors. But if I don't, then the clarity of perhaps why can emerge. If I keep numbing it, how am I going to be able to tune into the pain? So we have to be willing to let ourselves feel that discomfort, even when we don't know why we feel uncomfortable. 
The heart has no requirement for the why. The true self has no agenda. It trusts itself completely without question. It says, it doesn't feel good when I do this, so I'm just not going to do this anymore. And it's off and it goes in the new direction, right? But it's the mind that requires the why. Because the mind says, well, this has always worked and this is what I've always done. And so I need a reason why I can't do that anymore. No, you don't. Isn't that I don't feel good when I do it? Isn't that reason enough? And again, back to that key card analogy, my feelings and my beliefs and my choices program that key card. So if I keep showing up to plug into that reality where I do these things that don't make me feel good, I can't access the reality where I don't do those things anymore. Some of the things need to be felt. Some of it just needs to be released. And the only way we're going to know is by being willing to feel all of it. If I'm not willing to sit with myself and sit with my pain and sit with my old beliefs, I'm never going to be able to move into something new. And that doesn't mean that I have to sit and cry and have this big emotional thing all the time. It doesn't mean that we're going to, you know, clearing, release, integrating, loving, accepting, acknowledging. Yeah, that's all still part of it. But a lot of this stuff just needs, it's the dead end thing. A lot of it is we just need to sit with it to realize, you know what, there's just something in me that I just, you know, it's like this, um, this old muscle memory and this old echo of an old belief and I just need to sit with it and go, oh, that's all it is. Okay, done. I love you, boo. But we don't tell that story anymore. So I take the aspect of myself, I integrate it, we move on and the story dies. Taking advantage of this period that we are in where things have really slowed down internally is crucial. Allow yourself to take full advantage of it. And what that means is radical self-care. You've got to muster a level of compassion for yourself that you have never experienced before. You've got to muster a level of boundary where you say, look, it's hard. It may be difficult for me to say this, but I just can't do that anymore. It may terrify me. You know, I went through this last year with reconfiguring my calendar and saying, I only see clients four days a week. I only do a maximum of three clients in a day. That terrified me because that was like, you know, potentially that could be like 40% of my income was gone. But what it did was it allowed me to find time in my life where I cared for myself, where I sat with myself, where I created a space where I said, you know what? I have no agenda today other than to trust myself. I have no agenda today other than to let my heart guide me. I have no agenda today other than to be present with whatever is within. How do you talk to yourself? When you need self-care and you need some time out and you need to rest and you need to rejuvenate, do you beat yourself up and say, God, you're fucking stupid? You're so weak. Why do you need that? No one else. Why do you think you're special that you need three days off a week and everyone else is working 60 hours a week? How do you care for yourself? Do you put yourself last? Do you set everyone else's problems before yours? You know, is it you setting yourself on fire to keep everyone warm? Well, as soon as everyone's warm, then I can, you know, put my fire out. That's your choice, but you are programming a key card that gives you access to a reality that will only continue for those things to be the reality. So when you want a new reality, you got to be willing to allow it. You got to be willing to take action. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't reach out to help and assist. You know, we see a lot of drama happening on the, the planet right now and the fires and, you know, issues and things that we can actively participate in. But you can't do it in spite of your own needs. That's just how it works. In this higher expression, that's just how it works. And you've got to find a way to create a boundary in your life and create a reality where you get to take care of yourself. This old martyring, self-sacrifice, cutting off my arm, setting myself on fire, so that another person can be taken care of, you're disempowering two people. So now not only is this person that you think you're taking care of still unable to take care of themselves, now you're half broken. Now you're bruised and battered and scarred and wounded. 
So that's really what we're being called to do. And this is, you know, the, the Oracle card readings that I've been doing have been so profound in the way that they can help people figure out where to focus their energy. Because I know right now it feels like it's like everything, it's like everything needs my attention. I don't know what to do. So an Oracle card reading may help you with that. The energy work sessions I'm still doing as well. And those are really useful in just pulling stuff out of the field. Like this old muscle memory and this old echo. It just, we don't need it anymore. This old, um, you know, neural pathway. So we're just sort of overwriting and deleting those programs from the hard drive. So that's how I can help. But you find the way that works for you. Ask those questions. Sit with yourself. And it is so crucial right now that we're doing our work in terms of if you've stopped meditating, find 10, 15 minutes where you can just sit. If you've stopped journaling, start again. If you've stopped exercising or taking whatever it is that you used to do to really care for yourself, those things are asking for you to begin again. Because right now, when things are so slow, we've got this opportunity to really get in there and just listen. Just be present. Just give yourself a moment to hear your own voice. Do yourself the honor of sitting with yourself and saying, gosh, what do you need right now? What can I do to help you? Body, what can I do to help you be healthy, balanced, and thriving? Emotional self, what can I do to help you feel like you're on an even keel or that you're being heard? Mental self, what can I do to help you move beyond the stories of limitation and lack and hurt and brokenness or whatever? So when we are moving into these realities that are beckoning us forward for 2018, these higher timelines where we are self-sustaining, we are self-regulating, we are self-nurturing, that doesn't just happen by accident. You have to learn how to do that. You have to remember how to do that. Yes, it is our natural state, but we haven't been taught how to do that. <clears throat> In fact, we've been taught to do the opposite. So remember, the only statement your divine self ever makes is, I am. And the rest of that sentence is created by you through your choices, through your beliefs, through your actions, through what you say yes to, through what you show up for. So that's what I want to share with you today. I'll put all the description, I'll put all the links in the description for my calendar. Um, the Mastery Mentorship is for now, it is closed. I have my four clients and I'm only doing four clients at a time for the mentorship and it's a six week program. So like mid January, I'll be taking some more people on for the mentorship program. So if you're interested in getting on the waiting list, you can email me directly through my, um, the, the form on my, on my website. And just be with yourself, love yourself, trust yourself, allow yourself to be present. Give yourself the care that you have always wanted to receive. Give yourself the compassion that you've always wanted to feel. Love yourself in the way that you have always wanted to be loved. And create healthy boundaries for yourself because nobody's going to do it for you. You are the only one. You have to advocate for yourself. You have to be willing to take a stand for yourself. Thank you for watching, you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. I love you. Mwah.